Lesson 13.4, vectors, and uh, this will actually be all of vectors, but this is the introduction. So what's a vector? I usually do a demonstration, but it doesn't really lend itself to this medium. So it's a uh, thing with two components, two aspects. And my demonstration is usually a person getting pulled in a couple directions by people with strings around his or her stomach, and they're pulling hard in all these opposite directions. And the point is that how would you represent those strings? And that's what a vector is how hard you're pulling but it's also the direction you're pulling because these two could be pulling the same as as hard as each other with the same force but if they're pulling in different directions you have different things they're not both the same force even though the magnitude of the force is the same so this is one of the two applications the first one is force and the two aspects of it are the magnitude and the direction. The other application is velocity. Where you have the uh, speed that you're traveling at and the direction you're traveling. So saying I'm going 40 miles an hour doesn't help. I'm going 40 miles an hour east. This is very different than going 40 miles per hour west. <clears throat> so that's a vector, something with two components. And since we're doing coordinates, they lend themselves to vectors. It's easy to make a vector. It's got two aspects to it, two components. Now, there's certain things that a lot of people, when I do the demonstration with the string, that they mess up. The length doesn't matter. It's how hard I pull the string. So a lot of people see a vector and they say, oh, it's it's just the length of the string. No, it's, it's how hard I pull the string and where I'm aiming it. Uh, the string is not a ray. Because a vector looks like a ray when we plot it, but it's not. Ray goes on forever and ever. Vector does not. And a big one is that the starting point of a ray really doesn't matter. And a lot of people think, oh, it's a vector. It's got to start at 0, 0. It doesn't matter. It can really start anywhere. It don't matter if you ever get to mechanics and engineering, but for now... Not really. So how do we notate a vector? Lots of different ways to do it. Uh, we could say there's two points that define the vector and put a little half hour on its roof. Uh, in physics, they do a lowercase vector with a little half hat on its roof. Uh, in the text, if you're using it, they show a vector as a coordinate which is really quite annoying because it looks like a coordinate to me so I won't do that in this class a vector will be shown with these little bent parentheses but when you're doing problems you have to read the problem carefully make sure they're talking about a vector versus a coordinate so um, what's the magnitude of a vector how big is that vector because we'll say and this is how Vectors are actually plotted. This vector, if we don't know where it starts, we can assume it starts at the origin. But like I said earlier, it could start anywhere. So this vector is 3, 4. As in 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And what's the magnitude? And we'd write this. This means magnitude. No, you don't have to write it this big. it's five long how do I know it's five long you don't know that one I'm probably past the point of helping you on that one 
So why not just say, what's well, a vector of five? Hey, look, that vector up here, this is, you know, a vector of five. Well, because without the three, four, we don't have direction. got to have direction otherwise what's the point for example what if i had a vector that was negative four and negative three would be a different vector so this is complicated stuff this is an introduction we'll do more later give you lots of practice out of it so we've got a uh, vector and is in all things plot it going 80 miles east hundred fifty miles north so we draw it out to that spot we give it a little arrow with a head on it so there's the vector shown on coordinate plane how would we write that 80 comma 150 how fast is the plane moving I'm gonna say 170 I give units it's gonna go 170 miles per hour and again I don't know if I should even bother telling you why that is but 80, 150, 170 works if you just thag it out. Now, what angle is the plane traveling at? We'll call it theta. And I'm going to do it up here where you can see what's going on. Theta right there. So obviously, tangent of theta equals 150 over 80. Opposite over adjacent. Put that in your calculator. Make sure it's in degrees. We get 61.9 degrees. And I like that problem because now a lot of things we've been tying together, we've been working on, are all tied together. Coordinate plane. Pythagorean theorem. Trig. So what engineers do, and they, they tie all this information together to solve problems. So, quick one, I told you this earlier, but now that will give you a good demonstration. I just drew this vector here, and it was, uh, forgot already, 80, 150. What if it started over a little bit? Would it change? The vector itself that is the answer is no it's still 80 150 it went 80 right 150 north so nothing's changed it's a confusing thing about vectors so a little bit more these are just manipulating vectors um, I give these points so I have to find vector vector PQ so looking at negative five, four. One, two, and the vector goes from P to Q. You might say, well, I'll find the distance. That's not what I asked for. I said, what is vector PQ? Hopefully you notice that it's 6 because it's positive to the right, negative 2. It went positive and then down. Tricky. Hopefully you get it. What's 2PQ? Well, it's hopefully obvious. You're just multiplying by what we call a scalar. Scalar only has one aspect. So scalar. What's negative 2PQ? Negative 12, 4. So it's opposite direction. The 2 scales it up like it's a 2 scale factor to be twice as big. 
Oh my goodness, yet something else we've learned being brought into play when we talk about vectors. What does it mean if two vectors are equal? These are the same. By that, I mean they have the same numbers here for x and y. So PQ, I need a different but equal vector. Well, PQ was 6, negative 2. So I'll just say A is uh, 0, comma 0, keep it simple, and B is 6, negative 2. So if it goes from A to B, it's the same vector. I pointed this out earlier. It does not matter where it starts. The vector sitting in the coordinate plane it could be anywhere. So how do you add a couple of vectors together? For instance, let's add PQ, add PQ, and AB. We get 6, negative 2, plus 6, negative 2. We get 12, negative 4. Just add the components. Really not that hard. And you can actually do this algebraically, which we just did. You can also do it on a coordinate plane. Since where they start doesn't matter, you just go uh, 6, negative 2 here, and then you add another one, 6, negative 2 here, and then your total one is from here to here. You can do it either way. Almost everybody does it algebraically because it's easier to see what's going on. Easier to do the math, but graphically helps you understand what's going on. So here's some examples. You can pause the recording and try it on your own because I'm going to do them very quickly. Now it does not say where this vector starts, so I'm just going to start at the origin and make it easy. This one goes negative 6, positive 4. So again, I'm going to start at the origin. Go up here and I'll put this one in, negative 6, 4. I'll put this one in, 9, negative 6. So add them together graphically, then I'd have to take this one. Let's see if I can do this. Nope, won't let me. I'll give it a different color. Let's put it in orange. It's funny, I undo that. So if I took these and add them together, I'd go out here for the first one, and I'll come a long way back for the second one. I believe they're on the same line, have the same slope. But if I added them algebraically, I'd get negative 6, 4, plus 9, negative 6 equals 3, negative 2, which is pretty much what I got here, 1, 2, 3, negative 2. So that's that vector right there. It's just another way to look at them. Are the two vectors parallel or perpendicular? And hopefully you remember this from either your algebra or a recent lesson. You have to find the slope of the vector, and the slope is change in y over change in x. And the vector is written in change in y. So you'd get negative 6 over 4 equals negative 3 halves. Or the other one, change in y over change in x, is 9 over negative 6. It's negative 3 halves. So parallel. So that's it. Vectors are tricky. You'll be able to manipulate them, but if you can truly understand them, it'll help you out a lot when you get into a physics class coming soon to a classroom near you. Good luck.